Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, the icon, Sting! And ladies and gentlemen, Impact opens with the entrance of the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Sting. It was Sunday at Victory Road. Sting victorious in his world title rematch with Jeff Hardy. And Taz, oh, look at look. this, yeah. look at this. Sting displaying a brand new TNA World Heavyweight title belt over his shoulder. Well, we assume that's what it is, right? I, I, I guess you're right. I'm pretty sure you're right because we see the other purple uh, title that's in Sting's hands, but what a reaction here. What an ovation, Mike, for the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, the Stinger, in the house right now on Impact. I've been waiting too long now to get this off my chest. So before this show, before Hogan's show, get started. Hogan and Bischoff, I want you to come here and face me right now. Or this show's not gonna start. I know Sting's the world champion, but calling out the, the men who head up TNA right here? Well, the world heavyweight champion has some stroke. Sting demanding to talk with the men who have been totally in charge of TNA ever since the legal verdict against TNA President Dixie Carter was announced back on March the 3rd. Yes, we are talking about immortals Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. Well, it doesn't seem like uh, Mr. Hogan and Mr. Bischoff are sweating the fact that they just got called out right here by the TNA World Champion. But you can just sense, Mike, this is a, uh, it's a combustible situation I think we're about to get into here. That's also the level of confidence that these two men have. Hogan and Bischoff, they'll tell you, they'll tell the world they are calling the shots now in TNA. Listen, I like the man or not, Hulk Hogan, and I'm a fan of Hulk Hogan. He's always had a certain swagger. And Eric Bischoff, like him or not, and most don't like him, he's always got a swagger. This is all that's left of Jeff Hardy. You can do whatever you want with it, Hulk. I want you to look me in the eye, Hogan, and I want you to tell me man to man, how does it feel to destroy somebody's career? I want you to explain to me how you can take a superstar like Jeff Hardy, a bright shining light, and dim it to the blackest of blacks. Two weeks ago, I stood across from Jeff Hardy in the ring and I could tell he wasn't the same man he was the first day he got here because the first day he got here, he shook my hand. He was excited to be here, Hulk. He was really excited about his future right here at TNA. The fact of the matter is Jeff is a grown man and he's responsible for his own choices and he chose to go down a road that would ultimately lead him to a dead end. And that's nobody's fault but Jeff's. But at the end of the day, it was your influence, Hulk, and your influence, Bischoff, that twisted his mind into the idea of having money and power and greed. The same kind of influence you have on all your little members of your little group. You painted a picture that's not even real, Hulk. There might not be a whole lot that I can do for Jeff Hardy at this point, but there's a whole lot that I can do for 50 of those wrestlers who are waiting back there, 50 of those guys who want, who have hunger, who have talent, and are ready to go. Oh, I 
get it. You're done. You're uh, Mr. Johnny come lately, uh, on, off, in, out, go home, come back. Stinger, who are you, man? I mean, you're coming here trying to blame Eric Bischoff and I, make us responsible for the embarrassment that Jeff Hardy caused a mortal at Victory Road? Is that what you're trying to do, brother? Oh, well, you know what? It's Jeff Hardy that let a mortal down, brother. It's not a mortal that let Jeff Hardy down. But if you want to hear the real gospel, brother, we're talking about selling out buildings all over the world, slamming giants. At the end of the day, brother, even on Jeff Hardy's best day, he couldn't live in the immortal Hulk Hogan shadow, dude. That's what it's really about. And you know, his shortcomings, that's what was responsible for his demise, brother. It was his own fault. Hey, and if it's not, well then explain it to us. Why is Immortal doing so great? Why are we at the top of the game? Why are we all main event players? Even at, You're right, brother, even Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's at the top of this game. But I get it, I get it, hold on, Eric. He wants to be the savior. He talks about 50 guys in the back. You want to warn all 50 guys in the back about the evil reign of Hulk Hogan? <laughs> well, let me give you some advice, Stinger. Everybody makes their own deal around here. And as far as you, the deal you better make, you better worry about saving your own ass around here. Because the mortal's in control. And ever since I came back two weeks ago, ever since we took total 110% control of this company, my cell phone's been ringing off the hook, Jack. I got main eventers that can blow you away all over the world calling me, wanting to jump on my back and go for the ride of their life, Jack. Everybody in this business is replaceable especially you, Stinger. And you, just like Jeff Hardy, can just be another body that I need to replace. Put that in your Stinger pipe and smoke it. Your phone's ringing off the hook. Let, let's get back to the phone ringing off the hook. If it's ringing off the hook, where is everybody? Because every single week, all I see is you and you and nobody else behind you except for a couple of punks. Rigging his phone off the hook. I've been waiting for this opportunity all my life. 20 years in the wrestling business. And Sting, make no mistake, there would be no wrestling business today if it wasn't for this man right here. And that burns your ass, doesn't it, Sting? You're a co-star. You're a sidekick. You're the background band. And if anybody knows about co-star Sting, it's me. Because I've been carrying around that sack of crap, Devon, for 15 years. I'll never forget the first day I met you too, when I looked into your eyes and I was like, wow, this guy's got jealousy running through his veins, man. You're jealous. But most of all, you got all these people fooled. They're suckers. They buy into this. Sting, you're selfish. 
You're selfish, man. It ain't about those guys in the back. It's about you. Because your entire career, you could never one-up this man. Never. And that's why you came back. Shut up. Hulk, Eric, I would consider it an honor and a privilege to be a part of Immortal. And as a first order of business for me, what I'd like to do is I would like to take out this decrepit dinosaur and become the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Hey, Sting, you can say anything you want because with all the face paint, the fancy robes, and even that title around your waist, you take two steps to the left, you take two steps to the right, no matter where you go, you'll never be out of this man's shadow. Never. You know something, brother? Don't even waste your time on that piece of garbage. You want a title shot, brother? 44. Well, it looks like we have some other interested observers as Fortune, AJ Styles, Kazarian, and Beer Money, they enter the impact zone. Fortune's on their way to the ring. We'll be right back with Impact after this. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. There are four men in this ring that go by the name of Fortune. And we got your back sting 100%. Now, uh, Bully Ray, what is it that you wanted to do when you got in this business? What was it that you wanted to do? I know what it was. You wanted to be a singles wrestler. More than anything, right? You longed to be a singles wrestler, but that didn't happen, did it? Nope. Let me tell you what happened. You got a partner for the past 15 years to carry the load. Yeah, let that sink in, because without Devon, without Devon, there would be no tag team titles. There would be no Team 3D. And let's just face it, let's just face it, you just can't make it on your own. AJ, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to smack you in the face and knock that silver spoon right out of your mouth. No, but, but I, I wouldn't want to, you know, get in trouble. Anybody. You know, if it wasn't for Dixie wiping your ass for the past eight years, you'd probably be out on the streets. Actually, I'm quite surprised she's still not breastfeeding you. Let's not talk about your career up against my career, AJ. I'm a 23-time World Tag Team Champion, and if it wasn't for that loser, I could be a 23-time World Heavyweight Champion. AJ, you are a small man, a small man in the ring with giants. You don't even belong in the same ring as us, and Hulk, I'm sorry about the interruption if we could please get back to my title shot. Oh, oh, oh. You want a title shot? I got one for you. Oh, whoa, wow. Hold on, hold on, brother. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, hold on, brother. We got bigger fish to fry. They're not worth it. They're not worth it. Hey, this thing's heating up. This thing's getting good. And here comes Mr. Anderson, and ever since he lost the world title last month and against all odds, 
He's been demanding a rematch. Anderson and Rob Van Dam, they battled this past Sunday at Victory Road, but neither man gained the top challenger spot in the number one contenders matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the portion of the evening where the asshole comes out and poses the freaking question, where's my rematch? Huh? Where is it? Can anybody tell me? Anybody tell me where's my rematch? Huh? I don't see it anywhere. Is it hanging up there? I don't know. Is it down there? Where, where is it? You know, you really are an asshole. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. I'm an asshole! I own it! I live it! I love it! You know what? I'm an asshole. Asshole, asshole, asshole! <laughs> Let me tell you something, asshole. You couldn't beat RVD. That was for the number one contender spot. So guess what? I guess you're just out of the mix because you, asshole, couldn't get the job done. Oh, and for your information, RVD couldn't beat me either. So it's your call, Terrence. idea that's all about money. See, you kick his ass right now, we're going to enjoy it. And we'll get a big kick out of it. But I've got a better idea. For the last couple of the weeks, the network's been getting into our business. See, they want ratings. Well, I've got an idea. Since everybody's here and you want your shot, everybody wants to be the number one contender, I've got an idea. Why don't we have a four-way tonight? In our main event, let's make some money off all this hostility. You and RVD, you've already got your spot in a match. Since there wasn't a clear-cut winner at Victory Road, and since the bully here wants to be a part of Immortal, why don't we prove a point and see just what he's worth? And oh yeah, by the way, AJ, since you back sting so much why don't you join the little party be a part of this four-way because if you win you'll get your shot at sting and let's see how much you back up so let's do it let's do it tonight no i say no i say no i own that freaking match you can't do that i just did it we can and we just did hit my damn music that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reality of life today in TNA. I think it's great. I personally love the, I, I love what Bischoff laid down here. A four-way tonight for the number one contender spot? I think it's cool. Hogan and Bischoff running the show. We're going to find out who meets Sting for the TNA title next month at Lockdown.